Hi there, my name is uh, Dean Chandler. I am the Chief Revenue Officer for Wawa Networks. So Wawa Networks is a technology company involved in streaming content and streaming music space. So uh, for us, it's uh, we work with publishers and advertisers, uh, leveraging the visceral feeling of music, the positive feeling of music, to get them to get uh, publishers and their their customers more engaged, and the brands and their customers more engaged with those brands. Um, we came here to Seam to uh, meet like-minded people, and it's very interesting that it's at the. Uh, the penultimate event before Art Basel, I think the confluence of those two things sort of makes sense and it's great to be here to feel the creativity. 17 years ago, uh, I was uh, just out of college and I moved to New York City and I was in PR and uh, mutual friends were starting an internet company um, called Bottle Rocket, which was very, it was a, a digital advertising company. We worked with sports sites and we uh, created games for them and then we put advertising in those games and then split the revenue with the sites. Um, since then I was hooked just because it was it was youthful even if I'm not and it, there's a real sense of accomplishment there's a real sense of anything was possible and so 17 years ago I started that company we sold it and I uh, just continually been working for others and founding other companies I would say it is I would say there's always a foundation of ones and zeros but it doesn't come down to ones and zeros I think the more creative I, the idea the better if, my, my advice would simply be don't try to solve problems that don't exist. There are problems out there, and I'm not talking, there are world problems, but there are, you know, there are needs and wants of consumers out there. And I think the idea would be to figure out what, what a problem is and, try and sort of fix it. And you don't have to make more problems. A, a business plan helps, but I would, say, I would say a great idea is the seed of any great business plan. And I would say having, having passion and belief in, in that idea is the main thing because then passion is contagious and you can get you can get people that know the things you don't know to help you because they'll they'll approach it from their angle and then someone else will approach it from their angle and at some at one point you have all the sides covered and all and you'll find somebody doesn't have to be damn rich but they have more money than you that wants, wants to invest and they and then the snowball begins to roll the snowball of creativity and the snowball of technology begins to roll together and you and and Pretty soon, you've you've created a great startup, and there'll always be someone else that has a better idea than you, or a different idea in the same vein as you. As long as you believe in your idea, I I, I think that'll take you a long way to the finish line. I come from the angle of the revenue portion, and it seems to me you you could actually find, if we're just speaking just of yours for yours, you know, as a specific example, uh, the the passion there, what you need. What you need as a, in a business plan, what they mean is how are you going to get scale, right? And how are you going to get more people to look at that because at some point they're going to want to monetize those people that are looking at it and you already have uh, you already have a target demographic you have uh, you have probably artists and, and people of, of the arts which means you have a, a more they have a more mature uh, palette more tasteful palette which is going to help uh, when you are looking for revenue from them and also more often than not they're probably gonna have a high household income um, and so, I, we have, also, there's going to be a youth angle to that as well. So, and it'll be international if you describe it properly. Um, and what you'll be able to do is get. Uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of video and streaming and streaming video and streaming content. I think that right now is is a is a giant uh, a giant movement, and it's because proliferation of technology for for the ways to distribute that content, whether it be through cell phones, tablets, desktops. People can look at it anywhere and at any time, and that means that uh, it, they can we can push we can push ads to it uh, anywhere that they are, and we can target those ads specifically for those things. So once you have scale, then you can actually have then you can start talking real revenue. And even if you don't have scale, you can always work to get incremental revenue because there are always there are people out there looking for that target audience, and you just work with those those networks to make it happen. The whole time, you want to make sure that it doesn't dilute the uh, artistic aspects of it. You want to make sure that the that when you're integrating these these brands that they are relevant, contextually relevant, and they are appreciators of the arts. I think it's a I think it's a great idea. The the, the costs of that are substantial because streaming con streaming the streaming of content involves high powered servers and that's when you get to the zeros and the ones, right? And but and, which is always the foundation of it. So yeah there there 
the the price of your content of that of video content is going to be slightly higher, but it also garners slightly more on the revenue side. Banner ads always be there, and the and the prices of those are going to stabilize because essentially. All banner uh, advertisement, all those what we call standard ads, are going to be programmatically uh, distributed, um, just in, in basically in bidding marketplaces, uh, which is going to bring down the price, but stabilize the price. So again, it'll you know, have a nice pad there, a nice base there, but it's all. But advertising is moving to. Uh, it's already moved to sort of native content, branded content, and contextually relevant content to what you're doing. And I think there's, I, I think. For someone like you, there's a someone like your company. There's uh, I'm just if, having taking what we know from watching TV and the TV ads. There's an easy Under Armour uh, worked with the Under Armour worked with uh, the top ballet dancer in America, and they did a commercial together. And there are others like that. There's and you know again there are those companies craft uh, Model E's now um, and Coca-Cola and um, and Google and Microsoft that want elegant elements to it and they and they're looking for places they're they're looking for an opportunity to get into real content that is real that is beautiful instead of the lowest common denominator and i think i and i think the movement now which is for advertisement to be more native and then more native which means i'm just more integrated into the content of a site as well as um, video content leading to uh, leading to sites like yours like mine being audience extension elements for larger brands and for these content creators. They'll come to you with uh, women's lifestyle content and they'll wrap an ad around it and they'll run a quick vignette before your content and then it's your content. And then there's, and they're, and they're looking for more content creators like you to actually wrap ads around, the video ads around. Pre-roll, post-roll, mid-roll, interstitials, if you're long, uh, video interstitials, but video interstitials have been around, but it's mostly Pre-roll and it's 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 mostly pre-roll, still pre-roll, or just streaming video ads. Akia is a great example. Um, I worked with Akia on a campaign about six years ago uh, that had Ileana. I can't remember her last name anymore. Um, star that was in she was in Cape Fear, the, the the latest Cape Fear, and she was also in Seinfeld a few times. She was in a few other movies, and it was. Um, it, you know, it was a story about her having to build IKEA furniture. It was pretty funny. And then, uh, but people like it, companies like IKEA, companies are doing that sort of great branded content where, where, they, where the narrative takes place maybe in their store or with their product, but it isn't about their product. And that's, that's sort of uber product placement, if you will. To make real revenue off of it, you do. You have to, you, I mean, you have to, we have to have not huge audience, but you have, you have to have a decent scale because they need to justify people looking at it, right? They need to justify. They need to justify putting money into it. No, 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 no. Thousands of views a day, a couple hundred thousand views a month would get you there. I mean, would get you I mean, any any amount over you know any amount over ten thousand is going to get you ad networks coming to you and approaching you. But you can do that yourself. You can go. I you know I'm right now. I'm only doing ten thousand of these views a month around the world. They're going to ask you to target it in specific places because that's what they do. And then. Um, if you say yes, we can run we can run thirty second pre roll ads in that, and they're going to offer you a price at around ten dollars CPM, ten per thousand, and so you just have to you know, is it worth it to get a hundred dollars a month from these guys if you're only doing ten thousand ten thousand views and they're doing offering you ten thousand I mean ten dollars CPMs? I'd say yes because that just means it's more money than nothing and also allows you to uh, keep growing scale and it validates the model. You can go to the next advertiser and say, look. These people are on my site. This is how they're. This is how they're monetizing my site. This is how I'm making money, and I mean there are, and it proves that there are advertisers interested. There's a thing called domain quality that I pay a lot of attention to when I'm talking to publishers, and it doesn't have to do with this. It's a combination of things. It's a combination of, of real practical things like, like unique usership, page views, time on site, things like that. But it also has to do with the sniff test, right? Which is, is the content. Decent is the content good, or are they really just a click farm? People looking for page views and impressions, and, and so there's a balance there. But high domain quality sites are the ones that have good content, do it in a legitimate way, like make sure that the you know make sure that the the, the clicks and impressions are real, not bot or robotic traffic. 
Um, and you know, and when you get there, you you are a legitimate ten thousand impressions is better is, is in a lot of ways more monetizable than a million bad impressions. So, I, you know, you could work with you could work with Cartier, you could work with Swarovski Crystal, you could work with Mercedes Benz, Audi, people like that. Probably right now, you know. Um, but the issue is the direct buys of those. Those guys usually only work with. Those guys work in scale, so you have to work with the ad networks already working with them, but they'll know that they can put, they know that you can be part of their luxury channel, and so they will put you in places, and then they will put ads that are in their luxury channel on your content. I'd say you know, there's Collective Media, there's uh, Yumi, there is Tube Mogul, there is Bright Roll, who's now part of uh, AOL or Yahoo, I forgot who bought them last week. Um, Google Ad Exchange, Google Ad, Ad Choices, Google X, they're all the same thing. Um, that'd be who to go to, and you, all you all you do is become part of uh, one of you know part of a, of a daisy chain of things. But it is something. Will they ask for exclusives? No. What you want to do is ask for 100% fill, right? And, which is in that every time something runs, anytime there's an opportunity to have an ad, you get an ad, and that depends on your ad advertising marketing threshold, really. That that's that's great. That's because that's time on site, and that's what advertisers like. Um, what they uh, probably what you'd want to do. Um, so you, I mean, you'll you'll get the you'll get the pre-roll content, and if you're doing two minutes per site, two, two minutes per visit, you you can actually run 30 second pre-rolls as opposed to 15 second pre-rolls. Yeah, I know, and they garner a little bit more money. I think most people are going to 15 second pre-rolls. The one Huffington Post, like HuffPo, Comedy Central, because mainly Comedy Central, because they know that they have you, they, that you want to see that 30 minutes of content. Will give you uh, give you about two minutes of two minutes of ad at the beginning and two minutes in the middle, if you want to see the whole Daily Show. But and it's usually there's usually it's one tenth to one fifth. Of, it's usually a measure of one fifth of of the view time can be extrapolated into uh, ad time, so two minutes would be 40 seconds, you could probably get away with, but I'd stick with 15, because you're only getting $2 more CPM, I'd say, on the larger ones anyway. Sure, I mean, those are, those are great launching pads for, for brands, and you'd have to, you can create a, you can create a channel yourself, and then um, I think for you that'd be also a great uh, avenue, because you, They'll monetize and split the revenue with you, and it's. I think it's a matter of getting, uh, getting a proper partnership with YouTube. Like you can start your own channel, but once you hit a number, certain number of videos, I think they ask you uh, to join their uh, join their sales daisy chain. Which is fine for you. We uh, we use various players. Um, we use we but we we have our own player, but we have. For our streaming music, we use a company called MediaNet, the same uh, company that uh, Spotify and Pandora uses. But we also, but we don't use we don't use Akamai. We uh, uh, Vindico, Vindico. We use we uh, use the MySpace player sometimes. We also use uh, this company Defy. Um, uh, we'll use we're play, our our site, our publishers, and our our tool, our technology is, is video player agnostic. So we'll, we'll take it from them, and then we just, and um, we'll, let, we'll let them deal with the streaming costs and all those things. We just have, we just give them a place to do it and the bandwidth to do it on our sites. No, but, it, but you would contact someone like me. There's you know, Audio Boom, I think, is, is a company that do, is, is, does that. They basically are repositories for spoken word and for other, uh, and for streaming radio stations. Um, ours are, Ours are ours are are calls to they're not streaming per se. Our, ours are well they are. We call a music repository, uh, but we are like for some of our publishing partners they want to do their own podcasts or their own or, or their own um, sort of short formats, spoken word stuff. And so we we will partner with someone like Audio Boom and uh, and have and have them basically maintain the library archive library there and then we just make another call and in a crude like technology way we just make a call when someone clicks on that we make call to it bring it up <laughs>